Friends in Christ, what's going on? Enoch here, your favorite Catholic rapper, and I am joined by one of my favorite people, uh, Mr. Steve, Sir Steve Cunningham of Census Fidelium, the founder and creator of everyone's favorite YouTube channel. Uh, I gotta admit it, everyone came to the TLM because of Census Fidelium. Well, most of us, I think. And uh, <laughs> welcome to Get to Know. This is my new series that I've started on my YouTube channel. And what I really wanted to do, uh, and Steve, there's a lot of great, talented folks out there in the Catholic world. I mean, we're talking about people from, uh, you know, your uh, YouTube podcasts, uh, those who, who are writing books, the theologians, philosophers, um, just just great, great people. And there's so much great talent that folks working in the vineyard. A lot of people know their work. They know what they do. They tune in every week to their, you know, to their YouTube, the podcast. They write the get the books, but not many people know who they are personally. And I, I kind of wanted to highlight the individual and just have some fun with it. And and rather than just, you know, what, what you do in your work and, and theology and things like that. So I, I decided to start this. And of course, you being a, a buddy and known you for a long time, I wanted to be my first guest. So welcome, Steve. Thank you again for coming. I appreciate you having me first. So that's a low bar. So that afterwards you can have. <laughs> oh no, no, there's the first is the best, right? And um, before we start, I wanted to give a shout out to Trinitine Beers, and this is Christ the King. Trinitine Beers is a great, probably the best beer company in the world because it's 100% Catholic. This is holy beer. Get your beer blessed, and it's got some great. Look at this, Christ the King, right here. They got Fulton Sheen. And it's just, just great, great, it's great beer. It's delicious. So I'm telling you, whenever they get the ability to sell out, sell, they're going to sell a lot. They're, it's really good stuff, too. They're going to they're gonna blow up. I agree with you. They're going to blow up for sure. Um, right now, we're just trying to get as many people to their social media as possible and get them to grow so that when they hit market, they, you know, they're, they're, they're running. Um, so, Steve, you want, you want to start? Ready to go? Now, you, you'd lead, I'll follow. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. We got some people on the chat here. Rob. Uh, everyone loves Rob. Rob, what's going on? Um, so I just wanted to uh, uh, start with rapid fire questions. All right. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Going to do some rapid fire questions, Steve. Uh, first question for you is waffles or pancakes? Uh, <laughs> oh. is this, I don't know. Chocolate, uh, chocolate pancakes. Yeah, I guess that was my, chocolate my pancakes. Our, first, okay. our first Christmas, she made chocolate pancakes and I think I had a diabetic coma afterwards, but they were fantastic. <laughs> okay, so uh, chocolate pancakes to your favorite. All right, basketball or baseball? Depends on the decade. I, I played both in college. Okay. Um, uh, baseball, I mean, it was baseball is awesome. It's just a, a the, the game itself. It's the only game when the the defense has the ball. Okay. It's no time limit. Well, until a couple of years ago, they put a time clock on the pitcher. Uh, a game could go days. It never it hasn't happened, but it can. And sure. There's always something new you've never seen at a game before. Uh, I would say baseball. I mean, basketball is a great sport too. You I mean it's a? I like I said in the in the 80s and 90s, I loved it. Uh, I watched the I quit watching after the Dream Team. Shows my age when they retired. Yeah. So after 92, you quit watching. Wow. When they retired, after they retired. So oh, uh, Stockton, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stockton Malone with the last go to go out. And uh, I actually just watched a series that's on Paramount on the Dream Team. And my wife's just laughing at me going, I go, I remember I had that shirt. I had those. You know, <laughs> I, just, I remember that interview. I remember that game. And uh, but no, they're both great. I would say baseball. Uh, long answer question. I think. Okay. Got it. OK. All right. You have to have lunch with either John the Baptist or St. Joseph. I'll go to Joseph because uh, St. John was a locust and cricket guy. And I'm not eating, for, I'm not wanting to eat the bugs. Uh, no, 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 what, what do you eat with St. Joseph? What do you eat? Uh, wood, right? Right? You're gonna chop it on some wood. Uh, I'm sure he made a killer barbecue or smoked something. I mean, he would uh, smoke something. Yeah, he probably had some <laughs> fine shavings. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So go, I want to move on to this next thing here. I, 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 I want to know something. You from, from the 80s to the 90s, I know all of us woke up in the morning on Saturday and we watched cartoons. Mm -hmm. All right. What was your go-to Saturday morning cartoon when you woke up on Saturday? And I know I know we all did it. 
What I was, was like, it? He, he Man sticks out. He Man. Mind. All right. That's what I was going to. Yeah, that's, that sticks out of my mind. Yeah. I know G.I. Joe was around, but He Man, I remember there was there was something at the mall with He Man and you know and, the, and Skeletor and all that. We just loved it. Uh tra- Transformers, Voltron. Okay. But He Man, He Man was the best, I think, for everyone. He, yeah, He Man. I, 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 tr- I was trying to show He Man to my kids. My wife watched like the first episode, and she goes, "We ain't watched him this ever again." It's all about magic and stuff like that. I'm like He Man, we grew up with this. She goes, "Yeah, they're with a ninety people. foot, ninety pound sword. I have the power." <laughs> everyone had the cat. Right, 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 right. All right. So, what was your, what was your, what was your life like growing up? You grew up in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Born, yeah. The grew up eighties and nineties. I saw uh, yeah, the VH one. I love the eighties. I love the nineties. I can I remember all this. Wait, what what was your go-to music growing up? Like what you like listening to? When we were kids, I mean yeah. dad controlled it. So you know what you <laughs> Cindy Lopper, uh uh Michael Jack Michael uh, Jackson, the Jackson Five, Oldies, yeah. Motown, uh Lionel uh Richie, uh Man, I could play it on the Motown channel on Pandora, and I know all those from that back in the day. And um, Billy Joel, obviously, had it when I was doing Uber at a Billy Joel channel in Chicago. And uh, man, yeah, there's my wife watches this uh, show called uh, Cold Case. She likes watching the uh, uh, the like these movie these TV shows that you have to, these uh, criminal things that they're having to find stuff. But oh. Cole, I can hear the music coming in from the other room, yeah. and I'm, I just start singing it. And she goes, "What are you doing?" I'll do that at the restaurants, and people are laughing because, like, the, <laughs> we went yesterday, to get a burger, and the lady waitress goes, I, "I can't remember the song, but I'm just belting it at the table." And she goes, "I grew up on that stuff." It's, I, and plus, I just like singing. It's karaoke in me, but that's awesome. Mot- Motown, I love, I, mean, I love listening to Motown. <laughs> Motown, yeah, that's that's what I. I mean. Believe it or not, so I grew up listening to Montana in the nineties. That's why I listened to Montana all the time in high school. Yeah. Believe it or not. All right, um, Tupac or Biggie? <laughs> <laughs> Who you got? Uh, Tupac, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you got Tupac over Biggie. California <laughs> Love, picture me rolling. Uh. <laughs> that was uh, that was it. Remember the. Uh, Remember uh, "Live and Die in L.A." when that first song came out? I, I don't know all of them. I just okay. when I was in uh, Charleston, <laughs> "Picture Me Rolling" was one of our uh, house hits, I guess you'd say. And sure, I mean, I'll still say I remember texting a friend of ours that you know, <laughs> "Picture Me Rolling." <laughs> "Picture Me Rolling." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was that I was got a good song. Keys coming from the West Sea. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's when he came out of jail. I think he was he, he was making that song. Yeah. All right. Um, next question for you. A very, very reverent Novus Ordo or Divine Liturgy Byzantine. What would you prefer? Which is funny because I just went to a went, went to a, a Novus Ordo uh, in where I'm at. There's about five like that within driving distance. That's just, I mean, the one I went to Sunday. Last time I went a year ago, there was no land in it. This year, this month, uh, this week, uh, all the chants propers were in Latin. He was obviously the only the only downside. He was facing us. Outside of that, everybody was at the rail receiving. Uh, you, I don't think anybody received in the hand. And uh, oh, but we, we got to a divine liturgy on Sundays. One reason because it's thirty minutes earlier than the TLM. And the only reason we like we I've been more of not going to the TLM on then is because sometimes the deacon doesn't show up. So poor father's doing communion by himself for a good number of crowd and it's like 30 minutes. I'm going, what the deacon, what do you got going on that day? That's your job. Get there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, actually we're going tomorrow to the Reverend Noah's no order because it's rush hour traffic to go to the TLM as well. So we're going, you know what? Instead of a two hour drive, we're going down to the five minute <laughs> drive. That's what we're doing. Take, take my yeah. track card, all you people. You don't, if you don't like it, take it. I, I'll, <laughs> I don't believe in no salvation outside the TLM. Even though I love it, I hope it comes back there. This diocese wants the TLM in every parish, so it will be there one day. Uh, thanks be to God. Yeah, and then and, then, and happy Hallow Tide. It's, it's Halloween, um, Hallow's Eve. Uh, tomorrow is the Holy Day of Obligation. I think in most dioceses, I, I don't know, it depends on East Coast, West Coast. It is for us, so I'll be going to Mass. Make sure you get yourself to Mass. And the next day is... Um, uh, now, growing up, Steve, uh, we, we, did you guys go to mass every single Sunday, or were you guys priesters? Because my my family were priesters, but 
did your dad drag you guys every single Sunday to mass or was it on and off? It was mom. Uh, dad uh, converted a couple uh, a little bit before he died. Uh, we, my brother and I remember when uh, he gave her the Christmas cards as a uh, next Easter, this Easter I'll be converting and mom was tearing up with joy and things like that. Uh, so mom was doing it. And dad was started going to it before he converted, started coming to mass with us. But mom <laughs> was the main one making us say the rosary. I remember saying the rosary and then going downstairs and watching the baseball game with dad. Okay. So, That's uh, great. Yeah, we, we went every Sunday, but uh, usually my mom was taking us. You know, Back in the day, we had a sports bar. So uh, maybe sometimes we'd go, you know, Saturday vigil. And uh, obviously, was, we didn't, I didn't never heard of the TLM until. 2011 ish. So this one growing up, it was just you know, you know, regular regular mass. What we thought, trying to be all the boys. And I remember falling asleep sometimes. And, uh, of course, <laughs> only one sermon I remember is father was talking about Mike Dicka. That was, that was it. <laughs> it tickled the ears, huh? Right there. That was it. Yeah. All right. It is okay. So you're at a gala. It's Saturday. Everyone's all dressed up. What is Steve Cunningham's go-to drink? I mean, now, now it's <laughs> scotch or a whiskey or whatever they got like that. And, okay. Uh, straight, no ice. Because uh, I can, or a good beer that's like Trinidine or uh, anything local. Think locally. Think locally. Act locally. Uh, there you go. <laughs> never screwed me up on that. It used. I used to be Miller Lite. Uh, all the the bland stuff, and then they had the good stuff, and I learned how to drink by sipping on it, enjoying it, and then right. my wife screwed me up by getting me an uh, art bag one time, and man, I never looked back after that one. That's the only one, I, that's the only thing I really uh, will spend a little extra on. We'll get we'll get an art bag, art bag bottle and uh, try to <laughs> take that for a month or two. <laughs> sure. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, and then scotch and, and bourbon. The same here. For me, it's like I, I don't like, understand the the, the, the fruity drinks. Uh, it's, my wife likes them. For me, if it doesn't smell like gasoline, I don't want to drink it. That's just <laughs> my appetite. But uh, it used to it used to be like a bourbon and coke, and then my, I got older and my stomach got older too. I guess because it started rejecting the coke part. I guess <laughs> I don't think Jim Beam was good is good either. So I think it was just a double whammy. whammy. So yeah. <laughs> I notice if I go cheap, it, it really screws me up. <laughs> cool. Brady or Montana? Who you got? I hate Joe Montana. <laughs> 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 so they both both those guys beat my uh, uh, teams uh, one one way or the other. 89 Super Bowl uh, or 88 Super Bowl. It was in January 18, 1989. Cincinnati Bengals, San Francisco 49ers. I remember it like yesterday. I was uh, crying like a little baby after – the last, you still see the highlights. It still <clears throat> puts a stake in me every time. When Montana with a minute 27 left, throws a crop down there. We go, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but then uh, Brady beat my Panthers in uh, uh, 2003. I had my hand hurt for a week after I hit the wall. Just not like punch <laughs> hit the wall when John, Car uh, John Casey kicked it out of bounds. When, and then Brady brought it down for the game-winning field goal. I was like, doggone it. Uh, it's so there's a deep move to both of this. Yeah. Say I haven't watched a game in three years. So. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, FSSP or Christ the King? Yeah, what kind of it's like my yeah, but I mean my brother's a fraternity priest and I have friends of both. Uh man, try to get me in trouble on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you had to let's look okay, at that's a different question. If you weren't married and, and you and you had your pick with any religious order that you could join, who would you pick and why? Redemptors. Redemptors. So that's Trans that's uh, Trans Alpine. Saint Alphonsus, right? Yeah. Okay. Transalpine. Uh, uh, the family hails from Naples. You got to track us back from Naples, and uh, since he was the bishop of Naples then, and connection with that and uh just i started reading alfonsus and just fell in love with his writing as yeah i consider him like the hall of famer in the sense sports wise goes back in sports you want to play ball you want to read the, see what the hall of famers did Cite mm -hmm. alfonsus quotes them all so i remember that sermon on uniformity of god's will and it's just uh you know who's oh, yeah. who in heaven telling you how to do it and that's i just love that part and i don't want joe blow i don't even want the you know priest down the street sometimes opinion I want the Hall of Famers. Who's there? How'd they get there? And what did they recommend? And uh, 
plus uh just the, the trans alpine redemptors themselves there's just a great group of guys and uh maybe when i'm older if, if i make it 80 and 90 and i'm by myself i might just go for the uh, layman area group and live up in that area got it okay i got another question for you you are in a bar and there's about four guys that want to mess with you they want to beat you up because you said the wrong thing we are in fiction land <laughs> you're fiction land. <laughs> this is fiction land all right you get to pick one saint in history to back you up to fight with you who are you picking uh mo moses no saint mo maurice maurice oh, oh okay maurice. leader of the thebian army got it okay kind of like when you talk about him it's always like the I am Maximus Aurelius Gladius, leader of the legion. <laughs> he just the way he carried. I guess the way he carried, and he was willing to die for it all. And right, right. And he apparently was the man of the army down there. And so you take him, you take him. I, 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 I pick Moses the Black. I don't know anybody want to mess with, mess with him. The, the Eastern Eastern father. Oh, he's not a father, but he's the Eastern saint. Wow. <laughs> those guys had to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were they were tough. So, all right, where did you meet your wife? Where it was in Charlotte, uh, okay. just and uh, yeah, we uh, known each other for a little bit. Went to Charlotte and then uh, started went to went to the St. Paris without really knowing. Uh, St. Anne's, I had a big devotion to St. Anne, anyways, and okay, yeah, just started talking that way. Started talking. All right, give us your proposal story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, I stole Bless and Carl's idea. Oh, what is that? I don't know. I'm not familiar he, with it. He uh, proposed in front of the uh, tabernacle. Ah, uh, okay. Is that uh, what he did? Yeah, I was at uh, Mount Carmel in Denver, and we were doing a holy hour beforehand and uh, decided, hey, let's walk up there and genuflect and uh, busted it out and said, oh, here you go. <laughs> okay. That's not bad. That's a cool way. A lot better than mine. Yeah, was, well, I heard it, and I was like, all right, imitate the saints. I was going to like, hey, let me imitate that. I, I don't know anybody else's, you know. Right, right. Yeah, my, my, mine wasn't that great. Well, it depends on who you ask. I proposed on stage while I was performing. I called her up on stage in front of the crowd and proposed there. She had That's no idea. bold. It was bold. It was bold. Yeah, I could, I could have been embarrassed in front of uh, in front of all 50 people, but it was fine. So, <laughs> 50s, I had none. So. <laughs> Jesus was your wingman. You had maybe you had if I made it to heaven and they uh, they were all laughing at me, uh, but hey, we saw that, you know. But that's outside of <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who are viewing this, uh, feel free to ask uh, any question you want uh, for Steve on the on the comments, and I'll, and I'll highlight it for you guys and, and, and get it. Is it me? I'll just uh, is the whole thing frozen. Is it me? No, it's just Enoch's frozen. Just checking. I'll just uh, hey everybody, how you doing? I'll keep going until uh, the internet comes back. There he is. My bad, bro. It's okay. I wasn't sure if it was me or not. No, it was me. Uh, my computer just completely shut off for some reason, for no reason whatsoever. So I'm back on my phone. That's all right. All right, we got a question from the uh, we got a question from the uh, the office over here. Uh, let's see. We got Robert. It says, "What made you start to take your fa faith truly seriously, Steve?" Hmm. Man, uh, hitting rock bottom really helped out. Uh, literally rock bottom. We'll get into too much of that, but uh, right. yeah, rock bottom. I was a uh, couple. I remember my brother texting me up, ignorance of scripture, is ignorance of Christ. How that all worked? I was I got a job with uh, doing medical sales and assistant. So people beforehand told my brother and I that we were looking like we were trying to make the other one laugh on Facebook, uh, which we were. And uh, 
<laughs> and then all of a sudden I get a job with medical sales. We were both personal trainers at the time, two, two different cities. And I was straight up basically a communist coming out of college. And then getting into medical was turned my head a little different because it was a different kind of work. Started listening to talk radio a little bit. Yeah, that just brought all kinds of different guys, changed a lot of things. Made me start reading. My brother saw that he was, uh, what I was doing, he changed up to doing church related stuff. So he was doing Saint of the Days and then he started doing apologetics. I was reading that. Interesting, but I didn't care. I had friends of mine text me up, what's wrong with your brother? I go, I don't know, what's, what, what, what are you mad about? Talk to him. Or, mm. I remember my first apologetic one was, uh, oh, you guys think you're so pompous being uh, the only religion, the only true religion. I, we're, there, I was talking to a, Sa a Southeastern Conference fan. I go, you're an SEC homer, right? He goes, yeah. Is it the best conference in the world? Yeah. Is that arrogance or, or is that truth? He's, I didn't hear back on that one. And because uh, it, was, it was Florida and Alabama, and Tennessee at the prime and all that. And uh, then eventually, I remember it was in October, my brother wrote me, he said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. I kind of like put his foot up my butt a little bit and uh, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. For some reason, the uh, part about St. Mary Magdalene having uh, seven demons really stuck out. So I went, wow, I didn't know that. What else? I remember he texted him back, saying, all right, what's next? And then that led me to <laughs> Full Machine's book, World's First Love, Flash Bar uh, Bishop Barron on WGN. Uh, what's that priest? I forget his name. Uh, he was uh, he was big at the time, too. Uh, uh, he left the priesthood. That I can't remember. Um, oh, uh, I think you're talking about um, Father Karapi. Karapi, listen to a lot of him. Right, right. Uh, and then that led me to Catholic Answers, listen to the po uh, apologetic stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, I went head over heels on that one. It was so the ignorance of scripture, the ignorance of Christ line got me, which I need stuff like that. You know, people would need, they have to be coddled or something. I need someone to pop me in the head sometimes. Sure, sure. No, that's that's a that's a that's a great way to come back. You gotta hit rock bottom sometimes. You gotta be oh, crucified yeah. to resurrect, I guess. Can we go up from there? Yeah. A uh, qu question from um, uh, Sermon. He says, "My question is, what church does Steve attend?" So it's like a dartboard sometimes. Where, where are we going? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's uh, I joke saying if there's a uh, right now we go to eleven o'clock uh, Byzantine right just because the eleven thirty is the TLM. And I really, it's beautiful. Both of them are. But I look at it, all right, who's winning is the 30 minute earlier so we can get the kids down for a nap earlier and they're not losing it later. So there's a logistics part of it, just like, uh, you know, St. Thomas talks about the incense. Beautiful, yes, and helps you bring your mind up to God. But it also took out the smell of animals crapping in the back of the basilicas. So there's all, you know, there's always a second use. Um, so yeah, on Sundays, we, we've been going to a little uh, mission, U uh, yeah, Ukrainian rite. Byzantine. He's a friend of mine too. He does both rights. He's a TLM guy too. And, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if there's a if there's a ten thirty or ten o'clocker, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> the only the better. All right. Here's here's a, here's a hard question right there. What is your favorite sermon on your channel? That's so many. Do you even yeah, have it's one? Like, uh, it's like saying, uh, "Which one's your favorite kid?" Uh, right, right. Uh, I mean, Christ is the Christ the. Uh, Christ is the point is still, that's almost a timeless one for things going on right now. Okay. I was about all the problems that went on with the uh, popes in the background and the cadaver synod, cadaver synod, uh, the pornocracy and all that. Just so that I, I can't, I've always seen somebody come up to when I do a table or conference, they're all worried about what's going on. And I tell them about the, Hey, you ever heard of the cadaver synod? And they have no clue. So it's one of those things that always sticks in my head. Uh, but the first one was the Cristeros, and that 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 kicked off the whole thing. And uh, just listen, that blew me away. And I remember Saint Anne, the Saint Anne uh, one that Father did the first one. Uh, that was one of those ones that ticked me off in the sense of why wasn't I told this? And maybe <laughs> Father. I think that was all of our responses. Man. I'm sorry. At one point. Yeah, yeah. That was a, that that was that was the one that really like mm, that was awesome. Where's the other gold? Uh, so yeah, I was hooked already, but that really hooked me. Sure. One. So I got a, I got a question. Here, but she's up top. I got a question for you. Um, if you had to pick a spiritual director between these two, would you take Father Isaac or Father Whip? Uh, <laughs> I know Father Isaac would have no problem. 
uh, taking a two by four to my head. So I probably go there because that's not offense to Father Argo. We're friends. Right. Uh, but uh, just that one, because all my coaches were like that. My dad was like that. All my coaches were like that. They didn't. Uh, uh, they they didn't beat around. It was one of those, you know, if you want to do it, uh, there was a just like the just like my brother. I I need somebody to you know, knock me upside the head with a two by four. Not saying Father couldn't do it. Uh, so I, I would just go with that because of the New Yorker in him. Okay, that's a, that's a good one. Got a question from the uh, from people watching here. Timothy says, "Are you pro Divine Mercy devotion, like say Faustina, or against it like some of the trads?" Yeah, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, literally nothing wrong with it. I know Father Art talks about it, says he used that for his uh, the the chaplet for his uh, for right, people yeah. that are using. Yeah, so <laughs> no, I mean I've never read the book. One reason because it's that thick. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I got all these other ones that it's it, like John Henry Newman. Everyone loves John Henry Newman. I picked up that book one time and looked at it and got to page five. Says, John, I can't do it. I'm sorry, man. I put the book back up. And other ones, it's kind of like everything else, just like devotions. Uh, I'm going to have devotions that other people will like, and other people have devotions that I don't like. I'm not too, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's a, I remember someone saying that was a great way to do uh, your penance for confession. And I remember one priest giving it to me once. And I thought it was great afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I have no issue with it. Uh, I know I, sometimes trads, right? I'll trad the other trad, and uh, I was, I'm kind of like the anti trad sometimes. <laughs> Not the hate trad, but it's kind of like you know, put them, in, put everyone in your place a little bit. Just calm down online. Very good, very good. All right, so um, so some true or false. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some true or false. You tell me if it's true or false. Uh, True or false? Stephen Cunningham owns a punching bag and a Dr. Fauci's face is in it. <laughs> Half truth. Uh, do have that, but I don't have the photo because I didn't want to spend more money for the ink. <laughs> It'd be uh, against the environment. Um, true or false? The the channel census Fidelium was started because of the uh, For Greater Glory movie. True. Yeah. I mean, that was uh, try to promote the. Promote the movie. We went to the Knights of Columbus. I'm a knight. Try it was supposed to be promoting it. Sure. And my brother and I and a friend of ours who came back into the church, he died two years ago. He was 400 pounder. Uh, hopefully he's kept stayed in. Uh, two of my best friends as a trainer were 400, 500 pounds. It was terrible marketing. Uh, but uh, we went to the movie to watch it. And there was five people there. It's us three and two other people that knew Moses. And that was it. And they were just old as they were old as dirt, and I was and I was so mad that no one else was watching it, so I put that uh, sermon up terribly. It was bad, just the way I did it. I had to redo it, and uh, yeah, that was the first one. And that's after that was if I learned something in a sermon, I'm just going to put it up because I'm sure someone else hasn't learned that either. <laughs> Twelve years later, I'm still it's like the hair club for men. I'm not only uh, the president, but I'm the client. It's helped a lot of people. I know a lot of folks that have come to the TLM or even just taking their faith more seriously was due to your channel and all the, and all the, the sermons of those priests. So, Yeah, God bless the priests. I just gave them a megaphone. They were the ones that did it, and I was just, I just gave them a, a soundboard to be able to get to uh, literally the ends of the earth, really. Wonderful. True or false, between Clown Planet, Census Fidelium, um, kids, wife, duties. Steve Cunningham only gets three hours of sleep per night. <laughs> Six on a good day. <laughs> Six on a good day. Not bad. Because <laughs> you're always working. You're always doing some video or some some podcast or it's, it's liquid crack one, but it's just my personality. Uh, when we when I was playing uh, basketball, uh, I practiced six to eight hours a day. It's just one of those I needed to. I had a quote from Larry Bird on my in the room. Uh, there's always one kid shooting 100 shots. I'm going to make sure I have one more than he does. Uh, so there's always <laughs> shooting more and pricing more. And if I knew how to eat and knew how to work out back in those days, my brother and I, we talk about all the time, we knew how to take work our body, like eat and take some time off. Right. We may have gone somewhere. Probably, we'd probably be burning in hell too, but uh, that was just me. I, I'd work until throw a ball until the ball falls apart or I fall apart. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, got a question for you. Um, your favorite 
Arab rapper who lives in Kentucky. <laughs> Some guy named Fawaz. I don't know if you know. Sweet. <laughs> Yeah, there's just so many of them here. I mean, I just didn't know. You could there's a whole them. city of them. I don't, I don't know if you know oh. Kentucky. It's, it's weird. All All right. It says it right there on the exit. <laughs> we got a question here. Favorite a devotion, of course, besides the rosary. Uh, I'll go with the holy face just because uh, it really fell back into my mom. had it on our in a kitchen wall when we were kids. I just never knew what it was about and never saw it. And, she had the books that I'm promoting now, and I never read them. And uh, now just learning more about it, especially with the times we're in, I've just been uh, head over heels. Plus, when I you see all the photos, I print these up from Vistaprint, and I got, I mean, one up there is the I, the holy name. And I just never know if there's the Veronica's Veil right there. And I got another one, St. Therese over there, and you see the holy face. And uh, I got another one over there, holy face is in there. And it's it's literally all over. And then in, in our prayer room, we got another one. It's a Spanish colonial painting. And it's uh, Our Lady of Sorrows, but on top there's the veil. It's 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 just been pounding away. And, uh, so yeah, I would go with that as the favorite after a rosary. True or false? Oh, there's a flag right there too. <laughs> that's right. What's the blue one? That blue one back there. The blue, uh, the the Lepanto. That's the Lepanto flag. Oh, Lepanto. Okay. I got a great Polaroid with the Muslims with that flag. Is <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, so I got a question from the audience over here. This is a good one. Have you see why haven't you had James Martin's sermon on your channel yet? <laughs> I take the garbage out once a day here enough. I don't have to. <laughs> it's a great response. <laughs> I don't like wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, your favorite saint? I would say prayers for for conversion, but yes, I was trying to be lighthearted about that. <laughs> Who's your favorite saint? Ah, Philomena. I would go with Philomena to start out. Philomena, okay. Yeah, she was one of the she was one of the first ones I fell for when it coming back in and listened to a I listened to a sermon, I listened to a lecture, and then I got a relic. Wear her relic. So second one because the first one healed the kid, and the kid they wouldn't give it back to me, so I had to go get another one. Uh, so yeah, it's, it was that's a cool story. Like, yeah, it's, it's, some kid had no platelets. Uh, just found out about the, the the problem. Told the told the buddy of mine who told me about the story to have them contact me. I'm going to the Adoration Chapel. I see the the family ends up seeing me. I never I don't didn't know they knew my name. <laughs> Steve, they can tell me about the story. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever heard about this lady, named, this girl named Philomena? Yeah, I started having a devotion. Talked to her about five minutes. Go to the Adoration Chapel. Type it in the code. And I don't have locutions. I don't have. I don't. I don't believe. And I went so because I heard Jesus. I was like, okay, what did he say? I heard this little thing go, uh, give her the re give her my relic. I said, it's my relic. And she said, no, it's mine. I go, yeah, that's a good point. You know, take off the take off the necklace, told the mom, here, give this to your kid, have her wear it, and uh, uh, we'll talk later. Go back in the Adoration Chapel, kneel down, look up. I just started giggling because I just found out, figured out what day it was. And it was the Feast of the Finding of Philomena's Relics. Mm. And uh, emailed the family afterwards. Let me tell you what today is, why today was pretty cool. And I uh, used to do a novena. And two uh, two weeks later, I asked, hey, how's the bill? Clear, clean bill of health. I asked them how long does it usually take. It takes about two years or something to get, if they get healthy about that. And I said, I'm not getting that relic back, am I? Said, nope. No. <laughs> I get another one. But uh, one time I was broke as a joke and asked her for a, did a novena for her, be able to pay a bill so I wouldn't get a penalty. And she sent me enough money for a bill, uh, uh, for the bill and a six pack of beer. So. <laughs> yeah, just wish I could go to Munano. Rob, congratulations. Uh, we'll be praying for you guys. It's a great pick for a name for a saint. Now, here's the question I was going to ask, but Rob beat me to it. Steve, why are you banned from Steubenville? The Steubenville, conference. Steubenville conference. Yes. Uh, yeah, there was, uh, I went to one in Denver. Not that I went to one. I had a table for one because I figured it was, might as well have some Catholic something there. And uh, I just, I couldn't take, I'm not one to keep my mouth shut in a lot of places. So I filmed the dance, the dance off. I still got it. The dance off that they were having a balloon tossing, the, the, you know, guitar guy riffing while they were saying prayers and all this. And uh, one of the guys, I mean, I had, I, we were giving away how to, how to do confession because the priests were coming up to me and said, hey, nobody here knows what sin is. Much less, and the priests are there are telling me how bad it is. Right. And uh, 
nobody cared. The, di the director of non-evangelization of Denver decided to write me and tell me uh, never to come to another uh, <laughs> Denver uh, event again. I was like, okay, fine, no problem. <laughs> so, so technically, I was banned from all Denver events, but particularly Steubenville. So I don't think the Steubenville guys want me back either. But <laughs> clean no. up the game, make it better. There's, I mean, come on, there's you don't have to have beach balls bouncing around. Oh man, I could give an entire live. I could probably go on for hours because I've been through about maybe seven or eight of those. Because I was director of youth ministry and I went through a lot of those. I could go on and on about Superville and how to how to you know make that a better conference for souls. Oh but, yeah, I, mean, well, like, I was giving away things. I had one yeah. guy who tell me that he gave, he asked for another rosary the next day because he gave the one he got previously as a tip to his Domino's guy. I was like, hey man, good job, thanks. And I, we were giving away not everything for free like I always do. And to my left was a group selling stuff for a hundred bucks, the, you know, t-shirts for 50, 40, 30, 50 dollars. Everything was priced. I'm going, man, you, know, you get daddy's credit card to come to this thing. You guys are just, you know, it's just a money thing. I, I'm trying to give away metal CDs, whatever, just to help these kids out. These guys are trying to milk them for everything they were worth. Yeah. It's after they paid about 135 bucks just to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Then you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta go through all, all, all of that. Um, True or false? Steve Cunningham loves the phrase praise and worship music. <laughs> I will raise you up on eagles. <laughs> you, know, you ever seen the movie? Uh, I just went stupid. John Belushi has the collar shirt on. Uh, Is it Animal House? Animal House, the guitar scene. <laughs> Every time I hear something like that, I think one time my, the last Good Friday, Nova Zorro went. Uh, it was in South Carolina, St. Paul's. And they had the flutes going and all that. And I told, I looked at my mom going, they she blows that thing one more time. I'm banging her head on top. I'm banging on top of her head. <laughs> I just pictured John Belushi just, mm, 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 and then handing it back. <laughs> I had anger anger management issues that I have to deal with. So. <laughs> You got a biggest fear? What's your biggest fear, Steve? Not making it to the uh, judgment day. Not making it there. Yeah, it's a tough one. Dying the state of mortal sin, right? I guess that's everyone's biggest fear. Yeah. Well, it should be at least, right? Yeah, I'm trying not to screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Timothy got a question. We'll wrap it up pretty soon. Do you do anything like Divine Office, Liturgy of the Hours, Little Office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, etc.? You know, I started doing a little office of BVM, and uh, I got it right over there. And uh, I just, I just need to do it more. Uh, mm -hmm. I would use the excuse, excuses or lies, I know, of just being overwhelmed with doing stuff. Maybe, kind of like the Martha problem: all work, no less Mary. I need more Mary in my life to balance out Martha. So uh, the little, the little office of BVM, I was, uh, I, I like a lot more for some reason. Uh, but no, most of the time I'm trying to. Still do prayer throughout the day, like the Jesus prayer, or if the if you hear the grandfather clock sometimes in my in the podcast or uh, reading Garage Day, and uh, which we got like a hundred bucks on Facebook Marketplace once. Anyways, I use that because I can hear the bell and I can tell when the top of the hour is. And there's a, one of the saints talking about. I think it was Francis of Sales saying about taking a hail mary at the top of the every hour and uh, spiritual communion like that. So it tries to keep my mind focused on that part. Because sometimes I'm working and I'm not even thinking of anything. I'm focused on what I'm doing. And then ding, 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 you know, the bell's going off. Going, okay, time to pray. Um, yeah, so, right. yeah, I, could, I need to do more. Mm. We'll do more. Yeah. We all do, I think. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. Favorite ice cream flavor? Flavor ice cream. Yeah, good chocolate, I guess, vanilla. <laughs> Just chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. I'm a chocolate guy. White chocolate. <laughs> white chocolate. Little Mike yeah, Jack. It was a basketball, basketball, basketball thing. White chocolate. The white chocolate. Who was that? That was uh Jason Williams. Jason Williams. White chocolate. Yeah. Man, you could pass. See, I, I remember playing three on three tournaments. I was the only uh white guy there, and I had the refs talking crap to me. Is that right? Do you remember <laughs> that? Remember what? Billy Ho. <laughs> Remember that one play he did? If you saw it, he, he was on a break. He was in the middle. He, he had two uh, of his teammates. I think it was a it was an all star game, 
and he put the ball behind his back to pass it to the guy on the left, pick, picked up his elbow yeah. to the guy on the on the right, and it was one of the, one of the greatest things I've seen. That was a pistol Pete move, uh, but he perfected. I tried it and I could not do it. I could get it. That's a hard move. That is hard, I, especially in a run like that. I, uh, no, uh, the elbow pass was so. Uh, other than John Stockton, who's your, who's your favorite basketball player of all time? Oh, Bird. Bird. Okay, so you take Bird over Magic? No, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just Bird. It was Bird. I mean, Bird and Magic were both were great, but uh, I was more of a Bird guy, shooter. Uh, Pat, he did everything. Uh, Chris Mullen was left-handed. That's dream team. You know, that whole everybody on there I loved. Yeah, Mullen was a lefty, Catholic lefty, and now was a, and a shooter. Guy can still shoot. Uh, you got to get some people uh, praising the work that you've done, and you all you also came out with um, census for Daniel TV, correct? No, that was because the the channel went down for the count. That was <laughs> okay, and then people were going, "All right, we got to have somewhere to back it up." So we were trying to come up with a name for it because it's supposed to be like a Catholic YouTube open up for everyone. Right, and right. We had some cheesy names, like so embarrassing names that we were coming up with. I go, "What? Why don't you just use mine? Just you got the brand, uh, so it's not." me my channel it's under the brand name we may rebrand it just because people are getting confused on that and plus i don't want to have uh i respect for the priest too i don't want to have somebody come on there and think that i'm for that group and while well, my name's underneath that umbrella so kind of like that thing not, not all dms are you know approved or something like that right 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 okay makes sense we'll continue to pray that thing that it grows um uh, give us your NBA Mount Rushmore, your four greatest of all time. What you got? Oh, man. You got to go Wilt with one. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I met the big O, Oscar Robertson. I met, I met the big O in an in a, in a airplane once when I was like 12. Okay. Uh, so big O. Uh, Pistol Pete. And, yeah. and Bird, right? I guess we can go. I get. I mean, it's a hard one. Yeah, we'll go with Bird. But I mean, shoot, Jordan was fantastic. But yeah, go with Bird. Just tell you some kind of you know six nine ugly guy that has no muscles from French Lick and can take a Indiana State to the finals and do what he did. But yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'd have uh, I, I'd have MJ and Wilt in mind, but I also have a uh, Kareem. I got to put LeBron in there, even though I can't stand his guts. Yeah. Horrible person. But if you look at the span of his career, he's, he's a, one of the best all-around players ever. Got to respect the game. Over LeBron. Was it? i take Kobe over LeBron. Yeah. For, um, in, some, in some areas, yeah. Overall, LeBron's a better player overall. But um, in, this, in some aspects, Kobe, yeah, definitely um, over LeBron. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is a good one. If you go back in time and meet any saint, who would it be? If I could go back in time, turn <laughs> back time. Uh, I'm just looking around the room. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from your wall? Yeah, I mean, dude's like, it's like, yeah, which one? Who, who gets left out? Uh, you can't pick our lady. That's cheating. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hey, Pierre de Smith, probably. I mean, you know the Pierre de Smith story because that's that's just cool what he did. I mean, travel the travel the land back in those days on horseback right. across the ocean a couple times and convert the Indians and uh, then putting up on his shoulder. Because uh, yeah, you could easily everyone could easily say like Teresa, Therese, all those guys would be cool, but. Uh, I was trying to think of somebody that no one would think of, but yeah, Pierre, I always go with Pierre de Smith. Uh, if anybody's in St. Louis, go to the Jesuit Museum. It's all kinds of Pierre de Smith stuff. It's right across the street from the Pius XII uh, Library, and nobody knows it exists. Go ahead. It's a great four, bud. Sam, Sam, that's a great four. It's a good pick. Yeah, solid. Yeah. Imagine, uh, I'd, I'd probably pick Vincent Ferrer. Imagine walk, you know. Imagine hanging out with that guy in, in one day. There's a lot of you imagine like that. You're like, yeah, you just walk. Hey, Vinny. <laughs> 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 uh, All right. <clears throat> we'll do two more questions, and then um, we'll get you back with your family. Um, favorite cheap 
Terrible beer. Southpaw. Southpaw. Okay. That was t- that was god awful, but that was what we drank in the <laughs> in Charleston. You get a twelve pack for five sixty nine. It, it was it was pretty much. Uh, uh, I think water from the sewer is probably better, but uh, uh, that was it. There's remember Father uh, Cluey talks about this uh, how back in the day. Uh, all these beers were just so great. Everyone had a different taste, and it was solid. And you know, you knew it was kind of local to the area, things like that. Then all of a sudden, in the '60s, they, they started becoming bland. One size fit all. <laughs> take away all the good stuff out of it. They take out the smells and bells in a sense, and just one bland, same thing. It just got bad. And then these local guys started making their own stuff here and there and everywhere. And all these conventions started coming up and. Hey, as far, you talking about the mass or you talking about beer now? So. <laughs> uh, last question. And I got a last question for you. If money was not an object uh, or a problem, uh, which diocese would you prefer to live under for the sake of your spiritual formation? I say here, I mean, I can't I can't find anything better than the one I'm in right now. And uh, just knowing the what their, their future is, is and their their what their what their goal is with their seminary, and uh, I would put this one up uh, above uh, Lincoln and other places, not cool. even close in a sense. I mean, I haven't been to all of them, but uh, if there's a copycat league like the NFL and uh, NBA is supposed to be, especially NFL, if Catholic diocese start copycatting what they're doing here, uh, I think we'd be in a much better place around in the continental U.S. Definitely. Okay. Wait, one more question before we leave. That's fine. I don't care. Fine. All right. Okay. Check this out. It's just this is a good one. I just thought of this. All right. We have a conclave. We have white smoke. By the grace of God, they picked Steve Cunningham to be the new pope. Number one, what what name would you pick? And number two, what would be the first three things that you would do as a in, in, in your uh, pontificate administration? Yeah. See, I've actually thought about that word president wise. <laughs> and then after my third month, I'd be killed. I, <laughs> first off, what were you smoking before you came up with that question? <laughs> it's the uh, Trinity beer. Uh, name. Uh, Oh, God. I like, I don't know. Go on. Not Leo, I guess. It's just, just the, name, the names of the Leos or Pius or Leo. I guess that'd be a flip off. I, go Wait. original? I don't know. Do I, I don't want to be like an original one, like go without Puma Ponzes. Uh, that'd be cool. But I don't know. But Leo or Pius, I guess, just because the you don't want to screw the clock up. You got the Pius, the Pius clock. So if you go with the Pius 13th, you just kill that clock. Right, uh, right, right. Really, you know, I guess it's a cool name. <laughs> oh, <no. Don't> check. <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, Rob. We got uh, we got some sixties. Now, what would be <clears throat> what would be the first thing you would do to 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 help the church? I have to know what my what what could I do? Uh, can't just. Mm. Would you call a council? I'd probably first thing to do would be uh, resign because that'd be the best thing for the church. <laughs> uh, man, 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 they, the, man, they, Trevor, send me more of the alcohol because I just got elected. I'm just because uh, I wouldn't be in the Vatican and be in my house right here and be a knock at the door going, "That's a joke." Be like a major league. Is that you, Warren? Is this another one of your jokes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excommunicate ex- James Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the the last and sickle stuff. I guess that'd be a good a serious question answers. I guess like uh, kind of goes back to the uh, the cadaver center with the Pope doing the end up reneging uh, the ordinations of the last Pope. So I guess you could go back in and just you know take out the the globalist <laughs> and typical <laughs> Laudato Si the, the gospel of the. Uh, 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 environmental nut jobs right now. Enoch is a papal rapper. Well, they, you know, they did have the Globetrotters uh, for Pius. <laughs> they were there a lot. So, I mean, you could have, yeah, you'd have Enoch there for doing that. 
Yeah, and I'd be happy to have some, you know, some involvement in, in the uh, in the uh, in the pontificate. Uh, here, this is a great question. I, I think this is important. Anthony for Jester would be perfect. Yes, that's definitely yes. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also professional stalker. <laughs> what is uh, what is the most touching con uh, con conversion story you've heard as a result of your channel? That's a good yeah, question. That, that is really good because there's a uh, uh, endless. Uh, it's email the emails and messages that come out it's just uh, uh it's almost daily but it's fantastic um yeah just just the oh man this just the uh, the thank yous just for being able to you know from other people that have hit rock bottom themselves or uh the sermon to just touch them to be able to like uh you know i was wrong on this i needed a that was their little you know foot up there you know what's keisters to get them going uh, help them with their marriage, help them with their family, help them with their kids, have the kids come back, uh, brought them back to the mass, brought them back to confession after years. Wow. Was able to talk to their family, the, you know, the faith. I mean, you, you name it. Uh, it's, you've heard it all. It's, that's why, again, I keep saying, people say, you know, you, you'll get to see everyone that you helped when you get to heaven. I go, if I, if I do that, I want to not screw that up so that I can see that. If not, it's going to be a, laughing stock if i mess this thing up and um you know, I'm just, I'm just happy for the priest because they're gonna I mean it's their job to do what they're doing and i'm like i said it just uh gave them a megaphone and giving others megaphones and it's helping the religious i know a lot of religious quarters that are getting more uh, vocations and the uh donations to help you know grow them a little grow them more and uh things like that that's even better to me that uh people are finding them and figuring out who they are and helping them out, helping them grow and kids wanting to go to them and things like that. So that's, I mean, I mean fantastic. I mean, Wonderful. Yeah. Like I said, I'm just the middle guy, just, you know, giving them the work, <laughs> just doing the work to get them, get them the, uh, the views. No, you, no that's, it's incredible. Um, I think that's a great question. I, th I think I'll, the, the Pope question and this question, I'll probably end with all of my future guests. I think those are, those are two great questions to end with. Um <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to tell the world? Um, anything else? Um, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't have a platform to promote you, but if you want to, you, you got a way bigger platform than I do. But if there's anybody if you want to promote that, that you got working on, the people, what well, people know about, please do. Well, I got the Father Abernathy, his stuff, uh, John Climacus, Ladder of Divine Ascent. I read that man, about eight years ago. Lent, yeah. change, change. Talk about a changed life. He's doing a commentary. Uh, still every Wednesday, so you can. I got the link on, underneath it, so you can join the Zoom calls that he does. So you can do it live or just listen to him. And I got some other stuff of his coming out that are Isaac the um, Isaac the Syrian, the Syrian. Holidays, and yes. uh, Cassian's conferences to go along with everything else. Bible study starting up in a couple in a week or two from Father Gordon. Uh, working on an idea, which I told the local priest here, I'm wanting to take over the world and, uh, it's, you know, peaking in the brain. Peaking in the brain. Uh, what are we doing <laughs> tonight? Thank you. Uh, so I got some ideas going with that. I'm trying to see if the diocese will do that with me and figure out, see if they, there's some cool things. I never, the ideas never stop. Plus I got crack in a can behind me and that helps out too. People were literally telling me, you're drinking one of those drinks again, aren't you? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you know? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I got a million ideas chugging along in that puny brain of mine and knowing you you're going to work through them all and they'll all be um they all manifest and we'll all benefit from them steve i appreciate you coming by uh out tonight and i know it's halloween it's all hollows eve i'm just, want everybody to go to mass tomorrow uh it's all your obligation and just go to mass even if it wasn't it's better for your soul but i i appreciate you coming out and sharing some of your story and your favorite things uh um would love to have you come back and do some other stuff on the on, on this channel and maybe a, a bust a freestyle or a beatbox later on? That that would be that would be fun. Uh, I remember pulling up the uh, uh, Our Lady of Our Lady of Mount Carmel jamming uh, Run DMC. It's tricky one time. It's tricky. <laughs> My wife's hitting me. Go stop that! You're gonna scandalize everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a classic. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. All that stuff, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, man. Anytime. No, appreciate you doing it. Yeah, I'm so yeah, we got um. So you guys know we got Rick Barrett from uh, is it the uh, brief? Is it Barrett Brief? 
Very brief, yeah. Very brief, and um, uh, the Crusade Channel, also a, a member of the um, of the uh, News from the Pew crew. Uh, I got Rick Barrett next week, uh, and we're going to get to know about him, and we got some other people coming on. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't scandalize too many people. <laughs> no, I know they love you, man. It looks like somebody said thank you for being such a, you know, a conduit, Steve. Uh, people like that. They love what you do and then everything about you. And uh, uh, I'd like to get um, uh, Anthony and Rob uh, on here together and then ask them some of these personal questions. That'll be a little fun one day. <laughs> we get them on there. Sounds good, buddy. All right. God bless, guys. Take care.